If you're looking to move from using a harness and retractable lead, I highly recommend a leather six foot leash in order to teach loose leash walking skills. The leash is a great tool for guiding dogs into position, especially the heel position. It's one point of contact in terms of communicating with your dog. Bree's getting her hair done. One of the things I teach when I return a dog after training is leash management. Managing a leash is not something that comes naturally to most people. It certainly didn't to me. I remember stumbling and bumbling and not knowing what to do with my hands and the dog was wrapping the leash around my body and it was just a mess. The reason most people don't use a six foot leash and use a retractable is to give their dog more freedom. Retractables are great for unstructured walks, unstructured walks or potty walks or throwing a ball but still having a you know 30 foot retractable leash so they can go out and fetch the ball and bring it back. What a retractable leash doesn't help you with is walking in a structured walk. A structured walk is you moving with your dog from let's say point A to point B in a park. You're looking to uh, work on some commands with the dog, uh, follow or heal, maybe sit and wait. In order to have a little bit more uh, guidance information communicated to the dog, a six foot leash is extremely helpful. I'm gonna go ahead and get started and just give some uh, tips on how to handle a leash when you're out on a walk. I'm an e-collar trainer. I'm not only having to manage a leash, I'm also having to manage the remote in my hand. So each hand has a job. The right hand is always the remote because I'm right hand dominant. And the left hand is managing the leash and guiding Brie into positions from heel or if we're working on uh, recall which has come for the first couple weeks or so then I'm managing the communication cue with that pulling her towards me. Great thing about uh, e-color training for just a moment is that eventually she'll be off leash. I refer to this as an invisible leash uh, E-color training done correctly gives you the control and safety at a high statistical level, like really close to 100%. So if you're right hand dominant, your remote will be in your right hand. When you're uh, walking in a follow or heel, I always transfer the leash very loosely, lay it across uh, the palm of my hand, across my fingers here, placing the remote in. The remote is held uh, in the right hand with the leash on the bottom. The remote is on the top. With the sport dog model, and this is an A25X, you have a wheel that spins. You can audibly hear when it clicks into the numbers. If you hold it to your side, it clicks back to either vibrate a tone depending on how you have the unit set up for your preference. Um, so if you just click back one, you'll be on the number one off of the VIT, which is a vibrator tone. Okay, so you've got the leash first, the remote on top. You're working the remote with your thumb, dialing the appropriate number depending on the distractions in the environment and where you are in training with the dog along with a whole bunch of other variables that filter in. You're also uh, able to reach uh, your buttons with your thumb, the uh, bottom button here, the top button, and then with your finger if you so need it, the high button which is on the side. The next thing you want to be aware of are your arms. I hold my arms in at my waist, so if your um, arms or elbows are touching where your waist is, your hand is drawn in close to your body here. 
This hand is used to guide the dog. It's the hand that becomes extremely important. If the dog is walking on the left side, the dog is watching for that hand to come down and guide into position, for example, for the heel command. If the dog's too far forward, you're guiding the dog back. The heel command is when the dog's shoulder is even with your left knee. If they're ahead, you're gonna be guiding them back to that uh, knee position. If they're too far behind, you're gonna be guiding them up to that knee position. You're also working with, uh, talking with them through the remote. So they're getting e-collar input, they're getting leash guidance input, they're getting verbal input, they're getting your nonverbal input, which are both of your feet moving, always starting with your left foot. This speaks volumes to a dog because they're lower to the ground, so they're usually looking uh, down instead of up at the sky. So when they see your left foot come forward, they're already getting up if they're in a sit position to start moving with you. Let me go ahead and uh, demonstrate uh, where we are uh, with walking. She does not know the uh, heel command. I haven't taught that yet. Uh, she follows. I've kind of tweaked the follow uh, for her to be on the left side, but not necessarily in a formal heel position. The follow or let's go, and she knows both of those uh, verbals. Uh, meaning to her she can walk in front, behind, or to either side. That's the definition of it, but again, I've tweaked hers, preparing her for the heel to follow or let's go on my left side. So she's in transition to probably always walk on the left side. The follow command, a dog, as it progresses through the two-week board and train, uh, mainly stays on the left side. Uh, that's just something that clicks in their mind. Uh, they really understand after you teach the heel command that they're supposed to be on the left side. Let's go. Okay, so you saw my left hand come down. If I feel tension on the leash, I, um, I don't need to look back. I can feel through the leash, she's talking to me, if there's tension on the leash, then I know that the left hand needs to come down to guide her um, up into position so I don't have that tension of pulling her forward. Uh, again, if she's up there in front of me and she's pulling, then I'm guiding her back. I don't want to be pulled forward, I don't want to be pulled backwards. I want a nice loose uh, leash here, no tension. Ideally, she's visually checking in with me. She's aware that I'm at the other end of the leash. If I'm turning, she's turning with me, regardless of whether it's an inside turn or an outside turn around an object. With the follow and let's go, it doesn't matter if they sit, stand, or down, it just doesn't matter. And you want to walk kind of in a leadership walk uh, you don't want to hesitate. You want the dog to make mistakes so you can go ahead and help them through the mistakes. Prior to me becoming a, a dog trainer, I remember going to group class and I think I had miniature schnauzers at that point in time. And um, so we're going around in circles in the group class and when we stopped, I noticed, including myself, that I was stepping over during the heel uh, to make sure that I was aligned. So I was doing the work. The dog needs to be doing the work. The human needs to be in the leadership role, guiding them uh, with the leash, uh, tapping appropriately on the remote, and giving them all the cues they need in order to be successful. Let's go.
sliding my hand down. She's also getting input from her e-collar. Let's go. Okay, so you could see the head shake, that's called the recognition level. That means that I'm at the uh, right number and I'm at number one on the bottom button, which is the lowest setting you can have. All I'm doing is basically tapping her on the shoulder saying, hey, we're in school, I feel some tension on the leash, uh, let's go ahead uh, and move up further because I was moving her this way with the leash, guiding her. And here we go a little bit more. Let's go. And I'm guiding her into the uh, heel position. That's what we're going to be transitioning into very shortly. I hope this was helpful. This is Bree's couch. I always make it a point to uh, pick up furniture pretty cheaply at thrift stores uh, throughout our beautiful community. Some manners that we're working on associated with the couch. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give her her ball to redirect her uh, from chewing on the cushion. She obviously is still teething at five months, so let me go ahead. It's, it's my job in managing her to make sure she has something to redirect on. If she's chewing on something, I don't want her to chew on. So let me get her ball. She likes chewing on this soft ball. Bree's getting her hair done. I've put in some uh, rubber bands to help keep the hair up out of her eyes so she can see my hand signals during training and that. Clear uh, rubber bands, they're real tiny. You don't have to wrap them as many times, but they are a little bit more difficult to, uh, to get in. I just started putting in rubber bands probably maybe two weeks ago or so. Uh, initially she could take them all out and she still is able to. Getting one in here. Okay, so we got one in there. And I wanna check and make sure that it's not uh, pulling too much, which it's not. She also takes her foot and adjusts it the way that's comfortable for her. Put in uh, four right now, and that looks pretty good. I uh, can see her eyes. She'll be able to see my hand signals. Working with her with grooming from dremeling the nails, obviously putting the rubber bands in to keep the hair out of her eyes. Uh, also, she gets between her pads uh, with the clipper of the hair taken out there, combing and brushing her hair, uh, squirting on different products like uh, conditioner or detanglers. She also uh, has uh, been having marker training to help with all of these tasks. She is used to the noise of the trial. Let me go ahead and turn that on. And yes, yeah, she startles a little bit when I initially turn it on, but as it keeps running, she's perfectly fine with that. And let's go ahead and run through the, the clipper noise. You see, she's fine with that. And again, um, you know, dogs don't really like to have their front feet touched, and you can see she starts to hide them. Again, I'm continuing to work on her having a comfort level with me touching her feet, exposing her nails to get Dremel. We Dremel every morning. Sometimes we Dremel twice a day. Um, a lot of it is just uh, touching the nail briefly with the Dremel tool. She is ground, um, she is grinded down really well on her, her nails, including all of her dew claws. She has two dew claws on each of her back feet. 
it's really important that the two do claws on the front and the two on each foot on the back get dremeled along with the, the other nails here on the front. And again, you can see she's still teething. I don't have a, a toy handy right here in the training room now. Uh, I will have to put some in here for her. Okay, and that's it. That's her grooming. <laughs> Breathe, breathe. <laughs> okay, girl. 